cases that have POTS or dysautonomia or even brain injury understand that you end up with muscles in the body that are not functioning properly. So without the proper exercise, you're not going to get full brain recovery from any type of brain injury, whether it's a Parkinson's disease, whether it's an Alzheimer or a disease of cognitive function. Welcome to My Pods Podcast. I'm Dr. Joe Schneider, and after 35 years as a functional neurologist, a personal journey through stroke recovery and helping thousands of patients, I'm here to share breakthrough solutions for POTS and neurological wellness. From getting out of bed in the morning to rebuilding your nervous system, this is your guide to understanding and overcoming neurological challenges. Let's begin this journey to recovery together. Hello, Dr. Schneider from the Hope Brain and Body Recovery Center, and now the Hope Regeneration Center. So um, I'm really excited today. Now, it's just after Labor Day. All the kids are getting on the bus in the morning and uh, causing us not to get to work on time because of all the stops they make. But it reminds me that the fall sports start. So for all the kids that get out there and um, football, soccer, cross country, cheerleading, a lot of sports and a lot of athletic activities for kids. And you know that the most important organ of the body for kids to exercise their autonomic nervous system and that can go wrong when they have dysautonomia or POTS. Now that organ, drum roll please, is muscle. So why is muscle an organ? Well, we don't really consider it that, but it's probably one of the most important organs of the body when it comes to um, activity and exercise that we do every day. So if muscles is not exercised, then muscle becomes very flaccid. It atrophies very rapidly. You lose strength in your system. And you also lose strength in your autonomic nervous system. Now, why is that? Now, your muscle demands a lot of circulation. For muscles to do work, you have to have blood flow. You have to have lymph flow around the muscle. So muscle is very metabolic. It needs a lot of energy to operate. So anybody that's ever done exercise and um, anybody that's had a brain injury that has lost the ability to exercise, anybody that has POTS and lost the um, ability to exercise, understand how important it is to bring muscle back, to bring muscle back. So muscle has a lot of signaling that happens with your immune system because as you exercise, you get muscle breakdown, you get a lot of lactic acid that goes into muscle. And so muscle has a feedback for a quick energetic boost. So if you have a quick energetic boost, it helps your glucose get into the muscle or ketones into the muscle, or fat-induced energy systems. So muscle has a lot of aspects of creating a situation where your body can really function better. So we know that muscle will produce signaling to the brain for brain-derived neurotrophic factors. So muscle will drive not only muscle to grow and become stronger, but it will also facilitate the controls to muscle in the brain to change and get stronger also. So when you exercise, then you you understand that. If you exercise on a regular basis, you understand that. And most of our cases that have POTS or dysautonomia or even brain injury understand that you end up with 
muscles in the body that are not functioning properly. So without the proper exercise, you're not going to get full brain recovery from any type of brain injury, whether it's a Parkinson's disease, whether it's an Alzheimer or a disease of cognitive function. We know that exercise will affect memory. Exercise will also affect the controls in the brain for behavior. Exercise will also help you develop systems for endorphin release. So pain relief comes from exercise. So having muscle facilitated by different types of exercise will only make you stronger, affect fatigue, by doing it properly, supplying the muscle with what it needs to operate. And so when you have atrophy, you have atrophy of the muscle, you have atrophy of the fascia, which surrounds the muscle, you have atrophy of the systems that cause your microcirculation into the muscle. So if muscles come back, and anybody who knows that they've been out of the gym for a while they go back and they do a workout and they come out of that workout and they get very sore. They can hardly move. They get so sore. So you kind of like, you know, understand how important muscle function is. Now, hyperbaric oxygen is very, very popular. And uh, we don't have hyperbaric oxygen in our office. And I've I've been criticized for that. Why not hyperbaric oxygen? Well. Oxygen with exercise is the best way to get not only the muscle back and not only supply the brain with oxygen, but also to get the nervous system, the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system back again to the muscle functioning better. So when we exercise with oxygen, we're going to give you a high altitude oxygen. You'll go into hypoxia which signals the body to produce more red blood cells, signals the bone marrow and the spleen and the kidney to release erythrocyte chemicals that will stimulate those systems to come back. Now, exercise also stimulates your immune system. It will keep your immune system stronger. So in this post-COVID situation, in which we have a lot more dysautonomia and POTS and vertigo and so forth that comes from having the COVID virus or the vaccine. They both are causing issues metabolically with the nervous system, with neuroinflammation and so forth. So exercise is something that we have to bring our patients along when they haven't exercised very well. Because you know, if you have POTS, that you have exercise intolerance. Now, when your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure goes down. That's paradoxical. When your heart rate goes up, you should have increases in blood pressure to a certain point. So by exercising with oxygen, then what we do is we're able to repattern patients from having paradoxical increases or decreases with blood pressure, the, the tension in your blood vessels so that you can supply the proper oxygen and nutrients to the brain and to the body and to the different areas of the body. It's a complicated process, but what you should know is that as you get better with your neurological controls, that exercise is key to move forward with exercise every day. Now you do something, just anything. It could be a 10 minute walk. It could be going up a couple of stairs, up and down your stairs. It could be doing grip strength exercises. It could be doing anything that starts to metabolize muscle, number one, that looks at the control system of the muscle and looks at what's going to happen with the mechanisms in the body like breathing, diaphragm, heart rate, 
to start to control your system without incident. And the more you exercise, the more your body will support you. Now, if you've been under stress for many months or even years, like getting cases in which you can't get out of bed, got really heavy chronic fatigue, or well, reversing that, when patients come to the office with the techniques that we use. And when we reverse it, we're getting into people to, to do sensible exercise so that they can get back to work, they can get back to school, they can get back to doing the activities that make life very special, not only for individuals, but for families and for the community. So getting people back from the injury that takes place during the COVID, post-COVID era, during a traumatic brain injury, is a process that many people need guidance for and they need rehabilitation for. So this is Dr. Joe Schneider for the Hope Brain Body Recovery Center. If you are having a problem with POTS, if you're having a problem with dysautonomia, or multiple system atrophy, or post-COVID, long COVID, post-Lyme, post-Epstein-Barr virus issues, then give us a call. Our number is 610-544-9800. And also ask about our new Regeneration Center. Ask about the new Regeneration Center because it's added a level of recovery for our patients that we never thought was possible without it. Have a great day and be healthy and do something constructive as far as your exercise is concerned today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on My Pots Podcast. If you're looking for more support, visit us at hopebraincenter.com or follow our journey on TikTok where we share daily insights and inspiration. Remember, healing is possible. I'm living proof. I'm Dr. Joseph Schneider, and I'll see you next time as we continue exploring paths to recovery.